Hello and welcome back. Um, this episode we will be talking about lenses, lens caps, body caps, lens hoods, filters, and attachments. Um, so let's get right into it. First lens we're going to talk about is my Nikon 35 to 80 millimeter lens. Um, this is actually a Nikon brand lens. Gonna focus. There you go. Um, this is my workhorse lens. I love this lens. There's very few times that I haven't been able to use this lens, and it's usually I have to use my 70 by 300 millimeter, and that's because a I can't get close to something, or b it's too dangerous to get close to something to photograph. But other than that, my 35 to 80 millimeter is my workhorse. Um, shoot it both in autofocus and in manual and it works like a dream uh, don't do any particular fancy stuff with it um, when i have a focal length of about 50 to 55 it does really good portraits it also shoots well off a tripod and it's just an all good all around lens. The next lens I do a lot of shooting with is my 7300 lens. This is also find it an icon lens. Um, this works real well in both autofocus and manual. It's like I said it's good for getting there's places where, for whatever reason, you can't get close to, or it's just too dangerous to get close to. Um, it does some great, it's a great telephoto lens, and I do not as much work with it as I do my 35 to 80, but it works. Um, this also has a 62 millimeter objective here whereas the my workhorse lens only has a 52 millimeter objective which allows me to segue into my first attachment um, one of the attachments that I use a lot with this lens is this here it's a super wide angle HD lens from a company called newer N E oops, let's see, get that in there. N E E W E R newer. Newer, I don't know. Um, what I love about this lens, it's fifty two millimeter objective here, sixty two millimeter objective here. Takes great wide angle shots. Um, it really works well. Another advantage to this particular lens is this back part here screws off. And you've got a macro lens. Um, the macro lens is great for shooting stuff. A few years ago, I was in Colorado, me and my wife from Colorado, and I got some really good macro shots of ice crystals and snow crystals and stuff like that. Um, and it's just all around good lens or good attachment to augment the 35 by 80 millimeter lens. Now we're going to jump to my third lens that I use. This is a Sigma Sony mirror reflex lens. It is a fixed eight F stop. It is fully manual. You cannot use automatic. The camera will freak out on you. Um, this lens is great for uh, cosmic photography, lunar photography, stellar photography. Um, what makes this lens so powerful and so great is, is this here. It's a, it's a mirror like a telescope. 
the light rays go in. Go back to the mirror in the back here that you can see the bluish tint reflecting off it. Comes up in this dot here in the middle. Puts everything together and magnifies it again. And shoots it into your camera. Um, I've taken pictures up to roughly a half a mile with it. A little bit more. But it's great. Um, you will not take any action photography, shooting people, playing football or baseball or walking really fast or running. Not going to happen with this lens. Um, it's a great lens. Um, you have to mount the lens to a tripod. It is that heavy. It weighs probably about three pounds, four pounds right in there. This is an old school film camera that I use on my digital camera. This is one of the reasons why I am such a Nikon fanboy is because Nikon, a lot of their early digital cameras, they use the same mount as they did on their film cameras and the lenses cross over. Um, makes for some wonderful pictures. If you understand, there's an extra magnification curve when you use a old film camera lens on a digital camera. Um, once you once you figure that lens's magnification curve off on it, you're good to go. So this is a real good lens, but you're not gonna shoot any action with it. You're not gonna do, in fact, from the research I've done, your ISO should be between 400 and 800 and you should almost never use a shutter speed over 500 and my tripod has given up to ghost so I haven't been able to use it very much um, I've got to pick up a new tripod which I plan on picking up sometime in the next week or two and to do lunar photography with it um, plan on purchasing some solar sheets and making a solar filter and doing some solar work with it. Um, great. It is a great all around lens. Now, the one filter I like to use and it's good for portraits, it works best between about 48 and about 55 focal length on my workhorse lens. Is this it's a little Mirage? Um, filter works really, really well. I like it. Um, you get a, like I said, it works really good and for portraits or if you've got a good dark background, if you have your, your, your object you're photographing has a good black background to it, that works really well. You get a good, you get a good prisma effect. You get a little glowing, not really glowing, the little ghost images around. Beautiful lens, but it has its limitations. It doesn't work well outside, and it does not work well piggybacked on a wide angle lens. From there, I will go back to this my newer wide angle lens. Like I said earlier. This back part screws off and you have a macro lens, which works really, really well with macro ma magnifiers. Uh, I've taken pictures of a piece of sheetrock from where they're doing repairs in the apartment and got some really good photographs. Um, I will share a couple, with the, a couple of those with you at the end of the video. They're labeled on the settings of the camera, how it was done. Like I said, now let's segue into filters. Filters that I use a lot are natural density filters, and I have a circular polarizing filter. Um, the circularized, the circle, the circular polarizing filter is great for taking glare out of a picture. If you got reflections, um, metal, glass, um, a lot of green plants, uh, especially great big leaves, great big huge green leaves will reflect 
and give you a little bit of glare. Um, objects laying on the ground, bits of glass, glass that you won't see that you that will glare, cause glare in your picture after you look at it and you don't even know they're there. Um, shiny rocks, what have you, takes that off. It is also great for shooting into water. Um, if you're shooting, if you have fish, tadpoles, what have you, it's great for shooting that. Or, or if there's just some lovely stones or something under the water that you want to shoot. It is really great for that. Now, the circular polarizing filter does not work well with a wide angle lens. Your edges get distorted, your color gets a little bit wonky on you. And this will allow me to segue into my next thing, natural density filters. I will, if I'm shooting or wanting to shoot with the wide angle attachment and I'm using the polarizing filter, I will back it with a natural density four, which is a one F stop removal or reduction, excuse me. And this takes some of the distortion out. You still get a little bit. It's real noticeable when you're shooting a skyline where you've got a lot of sky, you've got a lot of blue, or you got a lot of a solid color. You, you'll see the distortion. But that natural density 4 filter will take out a lot of that distortion. Um, it's not perfect. But it's a good cheat. And if you're going to go and crop the image later anyhow, it's not a problem. It works really well. Um, now, your natural density filters, I use a 2, a 4, and an 8. They're designed pretty much if you have a waterfall. If you're taking pictures unfiltered with like a waterfall or something, waterfall, sprinkler, something that movement when you take a picture that movement stops what the natural density filter allows you to do is reduce your shutter speed reduce your f-stop and you can take a picture of the stuff let's say you're taking a picture of a waterfall unfortunately i haven't had the opportunity to do this myself yet but there are good, great videos that demonstrate this on youtube it allows it darkens it so when you shut when you slow your shutter speed down and your f stop you reduce your f stop you get a good clear picture the water has the feeling of movement to it and everything else isn't flooded out by light it is also good for light reduction um, I was playing around with the ND8, which is a 3F stop redu reduction, shooting a, I have a hookah, shooting a hookah outside, I intentionally waited to about two in the afternoon when the light was at its harshest and did some pretty amazing work. Um, I used a F stop of 10 on all the images and I did my shutter speed between a hundred one one hundredth of a second and one second um, I picked picked some of those pictures to add in at the end of the video to share with you great stuff hope you enjoy them now let's move on to the importance of lens caps body caps and stuff like that um, those protect your lenses. Even if you get a great deal on a lens, it's still expensive. And the last thing you want to do is bust the edge of the lens up or budge the back of the lens up where you can't use it. it makes it non-functional. And you have to spend the money again. Your lens caps and your butt caps. Um, it's good to have a stockpile of them. Um, uh, which I do uh, because I am forever losing them. Um, but cap comes off. Another nifty little thing you can get is a little lanyard that has a little sticky button on it. 
sticks to the lens cap, take your lens cap off, and boom. The only problem with it is I've found in the heat here in Texas that sometimes that little sticky thing will get hot, the glue will get weak, and you'll lose your lens cap. You still haven't lined it, but you've lost your lens cap. Um, it is what it is. Um, like I said, the lanyards help save on getting lens caps. Um, front lens cap, I, pr I prefer these kind of lens caps, little, little pushies. It just, I, that's what I prefer. Something else that you can do to help protect your lens is a simple lens hood. It's a little flower design. Both the ones I have are aftermarket, and I've heard, I've heard, read, seen things on that the aftermarket ones you can't put a lens cap on. Yes, you can. Um, shake it; it doesn't come off. Now, if I push fairly hard on the back of it, it comes off. But if you have this mounted to your lens, there shouldn't be anything pushing on the back of it. There is, you have a problem with your lens. Um, I can even use, this is the actual Nikon lens cap. I'll show you, lens cap, make sure, that, so there's no claiming of sleight of hand or anything. Take it, put it in. Doesn't come out. Like I said, to push real hard. And like I said, if there's anything pushing on the back of it and this pops off, you have a problem with your lens. Now, another thing I like about these aftermarket lens hoods, these have a locking ring. Um, which like when I was doing the filters, when I was playing with the natural density eight filter, I screwed the filter on, locked the ring, put the lock ring against, tightened it against the filter. So when I take the filter off to shoot the unfiltered image, all I'd have to do is switch it off to a lens, this other lens hood here, two lens hoods, and take the picture, pull the lens hood off, put the filtered lens hood on, and go. It saves time, energy, and, you, and in my opinion, you can't have another enough lens hoods. Another thing that's nice about the lens hood is if you're, if you're walking or you anticipate shooting or coming on a picture that, you know, where you have to, you have to take the picture, you're going to lose it, and you don't have time to fumble around with a lens cap, you can carry it like this. Don't have to worry about lens cap. Your lens is protected. Plus, if you're changing out lens, lenses on the fly, it allows you to set your lens down like that. No problem. You're, you don't have anything against the lens of your camera. But if time allows and you're not and you're changing out lenses and you have the time to do it, I always recommend put the lens cap on. Um, they store pretty good. Um, I have a metal tool case that's for it's supposed to be for computer tools that I lined with foam and I put my lenses and my lens hoods and stuff like my filters and stuff in like that. And talking about lens storage and safety, um, the LS filters come, or the, the ones that I got, I got them on eBay. I got a pretty good deal on them. A, they come in this hard plastic box and they come with a Velcro padded Velcro carrying case. And when I put that in my photographic backpack and I'm out hiking through the woods and I trip, fall, stumble, whatever, have that much added protection. Plus, 
I have they all they the these little Velcro cases are all white. This here is white on them. What I did is I took a sharpie marker and I colored them. So at a glance, I know this one has my UV filters in. This one has my natural density filters and my circular polarizing filter. And this one has my macro magnification filters. Um, that's just a trick so you don't have to open each case every time when you're looking for them. Sharpie marker lasts forever, marks on just about anything. Um, and that's pretty much the conclusion of this video. Um, stick around for the images. They're just a sampling of some of the images I've taken recently. So I hope you enjoy it. It was nice making this video for everyone. Have a good day. Peace.